Rob, do you have a uh, do you have a light? How are we? Was that her name? Yeah, how's this look, Ira? Is that window What was her name, Sam? Mickey? Mickey. And who's the other what? one? Janet? I don't remember the other it's one. It's hot, but it's bothering you. Beast? Beastmaster, yeah. Did you see that? Did you hear Goodman's uh, joke? Yeah, I did see uh, Beastmaster. Okay, that was I'm Beastmaster. Talk about what did like you say? That. I didn't like no, Beastmaster. Wait, so this guy okay. does it too. A There's guy. a raucous atmosphere in this set. I don't like it. <laughs> I don't like Jason Miller, who was like a lewd. <laughs> Uh, rolling. No, they're freaking out. Okay. <coughs> okay. Oh, that's not it's oh. It looked like the, the mixer for the Oh, let's lose it. Are we about uh, to start McDonald's this? Cup. No, 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 no. That's set. That's tape. <coughs> I can't deal. When we made Evil Dead, I wanted to make, do something that... I should have brought those blood capsules. Ready! Look, what do you want? Look, I'm a busy, busy <laughs> man. When I first rode down the shore. Can you, can, can you give the answers in French so we could send this to Patty? <laughs> I'm ready. You rolling? Rolling. <clears throat> ready? Action? Action. Thank you. Sam, what are the origins of this? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, okay. Sam, what were the origins of your <clears throat> Sam, what were the origins of your low budget horror movie, Evil Dead? What do you mean by low budget? <laughs> Start now. Okay. Quick. Okay. Sam <clears throat> Sam, how did your low budget horror film Evil Dead come to be made? Well, I met Robert Tappert at the University of, uh, no. <laughs> okay. Robert Tappert and myself, along with Bruce Campbell, all live in Detroit. And we... <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> Start out with an easier question. <laughs> <clears throat> Sam, could you describe Evil Dead? Yes, it is a rock'em sock'em roller coaster ride of uh, screaming horror. When you set out to make the film, at what point did you say anything goes? Um, well, we never really said that. We uh, wrote wrote the screenplay, and then uh, it was uh, it was pretty intense. A lot of things in the screenplay, I mean, were very intense. And uh, we just went about and filmed them, really. So that it was your intention from the beginning to make a brutal, savage <laughs> horror film? Uh, yes. No, not to make a brutal, savage horror film. We wanted to make Robert Tappert, the producer, and myself, and Bruce Campbell, wanted to make a film that would definitely uh, entertain the horror crowd. Because we had sat in on a lot of uh, drive-in movies and a lot of cheap horror theaters in Detroit during shows, and sometimes, most of the time, we would watch films, and they didn't deliver enough. That's what we felt. So we wanted to make one that would really uh, knock them with a punch. There are a lot of filmmakers that, that work out of the New York, L.A. mainstream, the, the regional filmmakers like Romero in Pittsburgh, uh, Renaissance Pictures, your production company, is working out of Detroit. What are the advantages of regional filmmaking? Well, for us in Detroit, uh, it was certainly possible. I don't know, I can't say easier because it's the only place I've done it, but it was possible for us to raise money out of the city. 
and possibly it is an advantage to live there because when we went to people knocking on doors and showing them a, a short version of the film we intended to make for money, they were still struck by the novelty of the thing, not having lived in a film production town. So it could have been a great advantage, the fact that we were asking for this money in a place that they don't make films. We were able to get it, certainly. So I think that living in Detroit had a lot to do with it because of it, because of that, and therefore and how. But uh, also, the unions in Detroit aren't quite as, uh, as far as I know, I've only made it one non-union picture, but they aren't as intense or powerful, and they won't uh, slash your tires or they won't uh, do any horrible things or make you act or have men on your sets because it's just not that strongly organized. So as an independent, it's easier to sneak through their net to make a picture. To raise the financing for the film, you made a Super 8 pilot for the picture. Right. Before we made Evil Dead, we made a Super 8 pilot called Evil... <laughs> called... St take it from the top. Okay. Before we made Evil Dead. <clears throat> Before we made Evil Dead, we made a Super 8 pilot of the film we intended to make, and that was called Within the Woods. And what I did was took the screenplay for Evil Dead, took a number of the elements from it, and wrote a very short story. We filmed it, and uh, it ran about 30 minutes, and it could sh we used it to show the investors exactly what kind of film they'd be buying into, because we had no track record, and they needed some sort of tangible proof that we could, in fact, make a movie of professional quality. Yeah, how old were you when you directed the film? I was, uh... <laughs> Rob, how old was I? 20. I was 20 when I directed the film. And the people that worked on the production were all also in their early 20s, right? I think I could have been 20 or 21, I'm not sure. It was already t two years ago, but, uh... <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it could have been 20 or 21. The people who worked on the film, uh, David Goodman, uh, who is also working on this show, strangely enough, and Tim Philo, the man behind the camera there, uh, Tim shot the picture, and David Goodman was the uh, transportation captain, and Robert Tappert, over there, was the producer on the, on the film. They are all in their 40s. <laughs> No, they're about, on the, on the average, about 26 years old. So it was a very young, young group of, of guys getting together and really pitching in everything they could to make the thing. You shot the picture on location in Tennessee. What were the conditions like? The conditions in Tennessee for us were, started out okay, but they became extremely difficult. When we got down to Tennessee, the Tennessee Film Commission, who had been scouting locations for us, told us that day that the cabin we intended to shoot in was, had dropped through. The location was no longer available. So we stalled and we were shooting everything else but what took place inside the cabin. And like 90% of the picture takes place in the cabin, so we were really stalling. Um, we finally did find a place. It was covered, it was an old place in this little valley surrounded by miles of woods near Morristown, Tennessee, and this place had been used, this area had been used as grazing land. In fact, these cows and cattle had knocked down the door of this place, and there was about three, about a, six inches of cow dung, and <laughs> we had to, the cameraman and the production assistants and everyone was just was shoveling out cow dung for, the, for a week, and we ripped out walls, tore out the ceiling, made a studio out of the place, and it worked out very well, finally, that locale, cow. Tell the story of the cabin, the horror story. The horror story? Well, it's funny you should say that, John, because there is, in fact, a little-known horror story that takes place in the cabin that we shot Evil Dead in. This cabin was built about 100 years ago, and the man who built it died maybe a week after he built the place. And it's located in this valley surrounded by these mountains that have an incredible amount of iron ore in them. So that during thunderstorms, most of the lightning bolts are attracted to this valley. So it's really an incredible thing to see 
when you're there during a storm. Well, no one lived in this cabin for the next 20 years, and it was probably around 1910 or so when a family of three moved into the place, a mother, daughter, and uh, a grandmother, so really three generations of women. They s one night during a thunderstorm, this little girl woke up, and she was scared by all the, the lightning happening around the cabin. So she ran into her mother's room, and pulling back the covers to climb into bed with her, she found that her mother was dead. Well, she was so frightened, she ran screaming into her grandmother's room, and somehow that same evening, she had died also during the night. And uh, they still don't really know why both of these women would simultaneously die in this place. Well, the little girl ran out into the storm about four miles to the nearest farmhouse through this raging thunderstorm out through the night and uh, they found her screaming, banging on their doors and they brought her inside and they got the story from her. Well, they took care of her after that and no one lived in the cabin since. This woman, this older woman uh, during thunderstorms, after that, I mean this younger woman who is now an older woman, but the, the little girl, <laughs> Sally. <laughs> It's really a scary story if you can get to the end of it. The people at the farmhouse raised this little girl. She had never been the same since. And during thunderstorms, she would oft oftentimes wander off from this cabin. And they would find her wandering around in the woods. And sometimes, well, here's where we come into the story. The Tennessee Film Commission said, yes, we've got this one cabin that's knocked, the cows have knocked down. It's full of dung, dung but uh, you can use it. But it's haunted. And we said, well, that sounds fun. So we went there. As we were shooting, uh, the fellow from this farm came by. And he said, he told us the story of exactly what happened and how his, his folks had taken in this little girl, who was now a very old woman, and that because there had been this thunderstorm the night before, he was looking for this woman because it's possible she had returned to this cabin. And uh, as far as we know, they never found the woman while we were down there shooting, and she could still be roaming those woods around Morristown, Tennessee. The strange, strangest part of the story is that a week after we left the cabin in Tennessee, as reported by the Tennessee Film Commission, a bolt of lightning hit the cabin and it burned to the ground. In Evil Dead, you achieved a lot.